look at me. I guess you got a chance to look at my scrapbook. Do you believe it? What a mess. I used to smoke, drink, eat all the wrong things. Never gave it a second thought. According to my doctor, I was a candidate for a heart attack. Just listen to him. Alan, your triglycerides are 400. You got an LDL cholesterol count of 280, and your HDL is only 25. Now, frankly, you're at high risk. So I said to him, would you mind running that by me again in English? You want a crash course, huh? OK, let's take it from the top. Yes, and please start with cholesterol. You know they tell you cholesterol, cholesterol. I don't even know what the stuff is. It's waxy, odorless. You find it in foods of animal origin, including, I suspect, all the things you like. Beef, cheese, mm -hmm. eggs. You got it. Oh, no. Yep. Plus poultry, fish, dairy products. Now, your body does need some cholesterol to keep you healthy. Oh, good. I'm glad to hear it. But not too much. Mm. The body, for instance, does not require bacon cheeseburgers. The body does not require bacon cheeseburgers, like he learned that in medical school. Now, let's go on to lipoproteins. These are particles that carry cholesterol from the liver to other parts of the body. There are very low-density lipoproteins, VLDLs, or VLDL cholesterol, low-density lipoproteins, LDLs, or LDL cholesterol, and high-density lipoproteins, uh, HDLs. Sorry, LDLs, uh, those are supposed to be the heavies, right? Ah, you've been reading up. Okay. And HDL is the good guy. That's it. Uh -huh. Triglycerides, I don't know. All right, allow me to introduce you. Oh, please do. <laughs> Lipids are fatty substances in the body. Triglycerides are one type of lipid and are carried through the body by the VLDLs. Now, if your triglyceride levels are too high, that could add to your trouble. And the same thing's true of your LDLs. Where do the HDLs come in? They're your scavengers. They remove the bad cholesterol from the bloodstream and tissues for transport back to the liver. I couldn't believe it. I never had a heart attack. I felt fine. And here my doctor was telling me I had to turn my life inside out. I didn't love it. We've been talking about the problem. And now we're going to talk about the solution. For starters, you're going to have to give up smoking. junk you call food. What? What am I supposed to eat? Tofu? Uh, arugula? Excellent suggestion. <laughs> please. And if you want to knock down those LDL and triglyceride levels, try losing some weight. Start jogging or power walking. Eh, Ten miles a week should do just fine. <laughs> Ten miles? Yeah. Not only will it whittle down those pounds, but it should help raise your HDL. <laughs> Come on. Well, I'm serious, Alan. I know. I know it's a tough regimen. And I know all this is hard to believe because you're asymptomatic and in uh, superficially decent shape. Hey, Doc, I feel fine. But you're not fine. Your lipoprotein profile is hollering out loud and clear. You just don't want to hear. What you're really saying is the party's over. Huh? For good. I didn't know it then, but making those adjustments would be harder than I had ever dreamed. Take food. All of a sudden, it was no more chocolate, no more butter, no more eggs. I love eggs and bacon and sausages. Oh, those little links, those fat, juicy little links, but no. All of a sudden, he went right down the menu, just like that. I remember sitting there, kind of numb, 
like I was standing at the bottom of some huge mountain, knowing I had to climb it. But a small part of me was really scared, wondering if I could make it, wondering if I could really reach that goal. To be perfectly honest, I was none too confident. I probably wouldn't have been able to make it if it wasn't for my wife. She came up with a whole new set of recipes. What is that? Squash. You love squash. I hate squash. You don't hate squash. Yes, I do. It's good for you. Ugh. Come on, eat it up. It's zero cholesterol. It's yellow and it's ugly. Well, you know, that's pretty good for squash. <laughs> well, from then on, it was squash one day beats the next, broccoli, beans, even eggplant. Oh, God, how I used to detest eggplant. But here I was in a whole new world, a world where eggplant mattered. <laughs> Take it from me. You can get used to anything if you have to. Well, I figured everything was under control, but the doctor wasn't satisfied. Alan, you're making progress. Ah, good. HDL is up, LDL is down. I don't like these triglycerides, though. Have you been exercising? Oh, yeah. My willpower. Oh. See, diet isn't enough. I mean, it's something, but you gotta have the whole enchilada. Ah, ah! Enchiladas mean cholesterol. I want you to start exercising regularly. Oh, come on, Doc. I don't I have mean time. it. So. I really got into jogging, and believe me, it was no piece of cake. <laughs> Listen to me, I even talk in food. You know, there was a time when I used to watch the joggers and think to myself, oh, those stiffs. Well, now I'm one of those stiffs, and glad of it. I'm lean, I'm mean. <laughs> you know, the trick to jogging or anything else having to do with compliance is just to get into the routine. Once you're over that hump, hell, you really miss it if you don't do it. Actually, I'm pretty proud of myself these days. I'm really surprised at how I've been able to resist temptation. You think it's easy to turn down your favorite dessert? Especially when everyone's eating what they want and you're trying not to offend your hostess. To a guy who loves sweets like I do, it's like throwing away a winning lottery ticket. But I managed it. Sure, I managed it. By the skin of my sweet tooth. Oh, did you see that? I can remember a time not so long ago when if something like that happened, I'd be ready for a confrontation. But am I gonna let myself get stressed out like that today? No way, because I know better. Anxiety and stress produce a response characterized by an increased heart rate, increased blood flow to the muscles, and elevated blood pressure. Now, this response may help people such as Alan meet a crisis, when it occurs frequently or is prolonged, it may also contribute significantly to coronary heart disease. Oh, man, do I miss smoking. I could kill for a cigarette. But 
One puff, and I'm back over that line. That invisible line between now and the way things used to be. Am I tempted? <laughs> every day, every hour, practically. But the way I see it, this heart thing is either going to make me or break me. Alan, I'm impressed. The last year, you've really done a great job. All right. <laughs> I got some good news. What? what? Your HDL is up from 25 to 30. Your triglycerides went from 400 to 300. And your LDL went from 280 to 230. But we need to do a little better. Uh-oh. I'm going to prescribe a medication which can help to bring down those levels to where they need to be. Now, you may think this is just a piece of paper. Mm -hmm. But it's not. It's commitment. A commitment? Does this mean that I'll have to take this for the rest of my life? Possibly. That's a commitment. <laughs> Funny, but that's when it really hit home. Oh, sure, I had quit smoking, modified my diet and my lifestyle, but this whole idea of sticking with it day after day forever, well, it finally got to me. This was real. Alan, even knowing that medication can make all the difference between health and illness, between life and death, you might find that you cannot fully accept your condition. Me? You'll make up excuses. You'll find reasons not to take it. Oh, come on. It's not me. So, what did I do? Well, I guess something in me rebelled. And for a time, I didn't comply. Didn't take my medication regularly. Hey, how you doing, Ellen? Hello, Charlie. How are you? All right. OK. Hmm. Way overdue on these, aren't we, Alan? Yeah, I guess I forgot. Would you forget the Super Bowl? This is not the Super Bowl. Your life? It's almost as important. Oh, come on, Charlie. You and the doctor. You guys are always on my case. Listen to me, pal. The only way this medicine is going to work is if you take it. Do you want to be like my brother-in-law? What happened with your brother-in-law? Well, he had about the same lipoprotein profile as you, and I kept after him to take his medication. Did he listen? It took a heart attack and a triple bypass to bring him around. Now, that seems a little extreme, doesn't it? Yeah, that's a little extreme. Well, I guess I had a real attitude. Despite everything, I was still hanging on to the ways I used to do things in the good old days. Then, after a while, I started to get my priorities straight. I found that... If I could just make up my mind to look at life in a bit of a different way, I could live a bunch of extra years. I'll give you an example. Ooh, steak looks good. Alan. I can go off the diet once in a while, can I? Alan? On the other hand, the broiled salmon looks nice. Now that's more like it. Okay, what are you gonna have? I think I'll have the trout. Okay, waiter. Well, I guess this is where we part company. It's been really nice talking with you. And as far as taking care of yourself, all I can say is, don't do anything I wouldn't do. Bye-bye.
you. Uh, yes, please. I would like a small cup of chocolate yogurt. Sure. I come to the choice of toppings. Uh-uh. No, 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 no. Absolutely not. No way. Mm -mm. No. Miss? Yes? Maybe a little hot fudge in the Hey, nobody's perfect. Okay, I'll admit it. Every day is a struggle. <clears throat> you know, it isn't easy to change your behavior. Any of it. I guess the thing that you have to do is you just do your best, day by day. And you know that even though you backslide a little bit, you haven't slid back as far as you used to. And you keep kind of thinking the thoughts that are going to help you to your goal. And maybe tomorrow will be that day that you let go of all the old ways of doing things and really take compliance to heart.